Well, hello and welcome back to my documentaries and reports. Now, I've said this before, but I'll say this again. This report is probably the most important that I've ever reported. It's to do with biblical, it's to do with the economy of the world, it's to do with the NATO, the UN, the New World Order, the oligarchy that's in control of all the nations. But most important of all, it wasn't until a friend sent to me all of the details about how the expansion of NATO has evolved over the last 18, 20 years. And I'm going to show you some text on that in a moment or two. The main reason why I'm giving you this report, if you were to Google the word Gog and Magog war, you will find literally thousands of opinions, conclusions, by just about every theologian in the Christian circle and the Talmudic or the Orthodox Jewish circle. The reason why neither the Jewish circle or the Christian circle have not been able to uh, zero in on the facts that I'm going to show you is because their particular doctrines that they follow are just wrought with lies and concocted by the secret societies and they have held the people back from understanding the Gog and Magog war. The Gog and Magog war is about a war where Yahweh, the creator God, calls up all of the nations of the world to a war. What for? Just so he can destroy them. Now in the uh, old text of Ezekiel 38 and 39, and I've read it, and you've probably read it many times, I could not understand how Yahweh would destroy all of the armies, all of the military might, all of the nations of the world because it just seemed impossible. And of course, in the uh, text itself, it mentions the origin of places like Cush and Pathros and Togomar and Goma and so on. All of the ancient names that were given to the lands and you'll get those in Genesis. And of course, unless you go into Google and you do a search on who Togoma and Goma and uh, Pastros put Lud, unless you do a, cer a search on them, you won't understand what nations are being referred to because they're all different today. But they are all still there. Oh, sure, some overlap on others, but all of those nations are still there. Now I'm putting up on the screen the report that I received concerning the evolution of NATO and UN and how it has evolved and expanded over the last 18 or 20 years. I'll put it up fairly slowly so that you can read it, wind the uh, film back and get the notes yourself. But it absolutely blew my mind when I realized that Yahweh God puts it in the minds of evil men to do his bidding, to do his punishment, to do his destruction. And here again, you're going to see that Yahweh God is doing just that with all of the nations of the world because he decreed that they were all wicked, all evil. They'd abrogated his laws in other words, they've done everything possible to conceal and hide the existence of Yahweh, the Creator God, and they have, they have made obsolete the Ten Commandment Law, which, by the way, is a foundation of our judicial system from the Westminster system. And they're going to replace, well, they have, they've replaced it with the Noahide Laws. That's the Talmudic 
Orthodox Jews law. They replaced it with that law, which has been accepted already, if you Google it, been accepted already by Congress, U USA government, and of course NATO. Now, if there's one thing that aggravates and angers Yahweh the Creator God, it is to do away with His law. But by doing away with His law, it has enabled the these oligarchy, the New World Order, the UN, the NATO people, the people in charge of all of the nations of the world, it's en enabled them to keep hidden from you the real truth of the old book. Now, I don't know whether you believe in God or not, but you're going to see what's happening here from both the governments and the old book. And I've linked it together because as I've shown you in this report, there's no other answer for who is the commander of the Gog War, who is the linchpin. And it has to be the commander of a force, a military force, over the entire earth. And you're going to see just how many people are involved here. More than that, you will also realise that these military forces that control the military of every nation, roughly 75% of all Earth's military are under control of NATO. So there we can zero in on who is going to be the commander to lead a war of all the nations to the war of Yahweh God that he's called just so he can destroy them. And a lot of what he does to destroy them is repeated when he brought the people out of Exodus and when he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. All of those issues of hail, uh, brimstone, fire, sulfur, all of those methods that he used to destroy the wicked people are going to be used again to destroy all of the nation's military. Now, in the wording of the books, uh, Ezekiel 38 and 39, it doesn't tell you that, he's going to, that they're coming to war against him with uh, machine guns and bombs and, and um, laser beam from satellites and B-24 bombers. Of course, they were never invented when this story was written. But you can transfer that into your mind as being F-118s, stealth bombers, machine guns, bombs and satellite lasers that will be used to try and win the war that Yahweh God has called them to do. And Yahweh God, as you will see in this report, is doing this exactly the same as he did for the king of Egypt when he brought him out of Egypt. And that is to show his power, to demonstrate the power of Yahweh God over all of the gods of the earth. The power of how Yahweh God demonstrates that he is the almighty powerful God that controls all of this earth. Now to give you this documentary, I'm going to put it on two different charts, chart one and chart two. And on each chart, I managed to put most of the text that you will need to know so you can do your own research. But there's a hell of a lot more that I have not put into this document. But you will find out a lot more when you get your head into the book, do your own research and have a look. Okay, let's get into this and you can read it with me. This is uh, chart one of two. What will happen on Yahweh's day of wrath and his day of vengeance? And that's what it's referred to in the old book. A little bit about Yahweh. Yahweh speaking, he says, I have made the earth and created man on it. By my hands I stretched out the heavens and all of the host. That's the solar system, the galaxies. I commanded all of the host into existence. I am the one who forms light and creates darkness. Who makes peace and created evil? I am Yahweh who created all this. That's in Isaiah 45. 
A little note there, particularly for the people that are waiting for a sacrifice on the cross for sins, says there in Isaiah 43, 25, I, only I alone forgive sin. Now, there's another phrase there where it says, Yahweh, God of our fathers, behold, you are God in heaven and you rule over all of the kingdoms and nations of this earth. And that's in Second Chronicles 20. Now, I've put boxes where you can tick what has happened or happening and the other box, you can take a copy of this and tick them as they happen because they will surely happen. Items 1, 2, 3 and 4 have already began. Some of them are already well underway. Items 5, 6, 7 and 8, they will be happening in front of your eyes very soon. Items 9, 10, 11 and 12, Note, in the report in Ezekiel 38 and 39, it's Yahweh who puts the ideas into the mind of God, the commander of this war. That's in Ezekiel 38 verse 10. And Yahweh speaking, he says, I will lead you out with all of your armies and cohorts. And I've put a note there because I believe that fits NATO. In item 10, it tells the whole world quite clearly this event of the Gog and Magog war is going to be in the end of days. Well, there's no way in the wide world, BC, or in the last thousand, two thousand years, it was the end of days. But we're pushing close to that point now. Yahweh has decreed to destroy all nations of this earth because of their wickedness and evil. They have abrogated his law. And you'll get the text there in Jeremiah chapter 30. There's a point here that I'll, 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 I'll give to you. The, oh, wait a minute, I'll just replace, I'll replace that. I'll just start that part again because it's a little bit of the report that's in the old book, in chapters 38 and 39. In the end of days, you will come to a land restored from the sword. You will come with many nations, and I've put there NATO, to a people. You will come to a people, and I've put there, that's the new chosen Israel. And that's pretty obvious when you read all of the prophecies, because there's no way in the wide world any group of people that were evil, that were rejected by Yahweh, that have broken his laws, that have done everything wicked in the eyes of Yahweh, there's no way in the wide world that old selected Israel could ever be redeemed and brought back into being Yahweh's team of people. So brought out from all of the nations and all of the dwellings in security on the soil of Israel. That's what he says, Yahweh speaking. You will be coming to a people brought out from all of the nations, all of them dwelling in security on the soil of Israel. Verse 18. Now there's no way in the wide world that'll settle too well with Jews or with Christians because they believe that the redeemed Israel will be taken up in the clouds in the rapture or they'll go up in the clouds to meet their Jesus. Um, and of course the Jews believe that that's not the um, messianic time won't come for them until all of the Jews are righteous. That is what is handed down from the teaching of the Lubavitch and the Hasidic. Yahweh speaking about NATO. And you will advance against my people in the end of days in the order that the nations of the earth will know me when I become sanctified through you before their eyes. Now that's giving you a pretty rundown on what it says in Ezekiel 38 and 39. It gives you a rundown on the words that were spoken by Yahweh to the prophet and it's making quite clear that this war of Gog and Magog takes place against his chosen people in the end of days. So there's no way in the wide world as I've just said that that could be a group of of evil and wicked people that have broken all his laws and in particular a group of people that he has rejected and decreed that they will be annihilated.
Now, as you go through all of these prophecies, you will see that they all link together. It tells you in Amos 3, 7 that Yahweh, the Creator God, does nothing without first telling it to his prophets to tell you. And here you are seeing how all of these prophecies that are going to happen, they cannot come to grips with it because of the doctrine out of the New Testament and because of the false doctrines that the Jews have. And if they still want to believe in the doctrines of the New Testament and believe in the salvation is through the blood of a Christ on the cross, there's no way in the wide world that they will understand all of the prophecies of the book and in particular understand about this war, Gog and Magog war. Okay, let's have a look at chart two. What will happen on Yahweh's day of wrath and vengeance? As I've said before, some of those that I've already ticked in the boxes have happened and are happening. And of course, the ones with Damascus destroyed, Jerusalem destroyed, and the new chosen people by the hand of Yahweh, and all of the texts are there for you to research it. And there will be an earthquake in Jerusalem re region. Then you can tick all those when those things happen in front of your eyes. Item nine, as I said before, it's Yahweh who puts the ideas into God. In other words, he has always put it into the minds of the enemy to come up and uh, attack his people so he could demonstrate his power. And this is exactly what is happening here. Yahweh said, I will lead you out with all of your armies. You will come with many nations and the only idea of who that could be would be NATO, which has already got control of over 75% of the Earth's military people. And they will come up to attack my people, Yahweh says. So Yahweh's people, the redeemed people, they're not going to a heaven. They're not being called up in the clouds as the New Testament teaches the Christian people to meet Jesus. And as with the Jews, they're not going to wait until their Mashiach, the Messiah, comes when everybody's become righteous. It says here that the new chosen people, the redeemed, who are settled in tranquility in my land, Yahweh says. You've got all of the text there that you can get that. In item 10, again, it is at the end of days that the Gog Magog War, NATO, which controls over the 75% of the Earth nation's military. And you've got the text there to check it out. Item 11. Now, how does Yahweh destroy all of the nations of the Earth, Gog and Magog, NATO? And it is by repeats. And I've put there for you fire, sulfur, hail, pestilence, fire and sulfur, that's brimstone, but also... It says that he will blind the people, blind the enemy. Could you imagine the, the pilots that are flying in the F-118 uh, jets, the fighter jets, etc., being hit with blindness? That's what Yahweh does. They will be crashing one after another. And that's been repeated. You'll find a story in 2 Kings 6 and Genesis 19. And the repeats of Ezekiel 38:21. Like Yahweh killed 185,000 of the enemy. You'll pick that up in Isaiah 37, 34. All of the nations are to be destroyed. That's Yahweh's promise. That's in Isaiah 34. There's a repeat that they will kill each other. Yahweh put it into the minds of the enemy soldiers who turn on each other. Well, they turn on each other with swords. This time, they'll turn on each other with machine guns. In item 12, it's important for you to understand this. Behold, Yahweh speaking, I swear by my great name, says Yahweh, that my name will no longer be mentioned, be uttered in the mouths of any man. I shall be diligent towards them for evil, not good. They will perish by the sword and by famine until they are annihilated. That is the promise that he has decreed against the Jews, against anybody that is holding to 
the false, the fake doctrines of the Talmud, the oral law, and you'll get those um, facts there in Jeremiah 44. But there's one more interesting thing there that comes out of Ezekiel 20. Not one man threw away his idols over that couple of thousand years. It tells you there that Jews today call their God by the Talmud name Hashem, which in Hebrew means the name. That's in Ezekiel 36, you'll get more of that. If you want to check out how the Jews have been annihilated and slaughtered over the couple of thousand years, Google pogroms. Because over the last 2,000 years, millions of Jews have been slaughtered and thrown out of many countries to freeze and to starve to death. It's an interesting note there in Isaiah 24 too that the enemy will be contained. They'll be held in their own DUMBs. Google that so you understand that they're all running for cover in what they think is a safe place for them to hide. Says Yahweh speaking, his people will honour his name in Isaiah 24. Now there's a note there which you can check it out when you have time. There is a resurrection and that's in Ezekiel 37 and Daniel 12. But you see all of the Christian people are waiting to be resurrected, the dead to be resurrected, to go up into the clouds to meet their Jesus. But in my previous report that I've given to you, please realise that the New Testament are added words to Yahweh's words. And all of the texts that you will find in the Old Testament, where in Deuteronomy chapter 4, Yahweh said, do not add to my words. I've given you all the words. So you've got words that were added by the Jews and you've got the New Testament in the third century AD that has been added by the Catholic Church and of course now you've had nearly a couple of thousand years where all of the Christian people believe and I showed you in the previous report that the worship of Jesus or blood sin sacrifice is a method of or ritual of worship of the pagan gods out of Egypt and out of Babylon. And if you want to know who wrote up the story in the New Testament, where it's riddled with stories of blood, sin, sacrifice, that is a copy over from the pagan worship system that was in Egypt. And who came out of Egypt with the people? Moses did. So Moses may not have written all that up, but if you Google who wrote the Torah, the law, you will find that it's as recent as the... I'll, I'll say that again. It is Rambam or Maimonides. you will find when you Google it. He is responsible for writing the book of Deuteronomy. So for those people who think that Moses wrote it all, no, they, it was not Moses who wrote it all. The Jews have obviously, very obviously, they have inserted words to suit their particular doctrine and so far as the um, um, Immaculate Conception and Mary and the Queen of Heaven, the fellow that was a king, first king of uh, Israel, Jeroboam, approximately 920 BC, he kicked off the beginning of what you will find there where they were worshipping the same as what you've got today in the Christian church as Easter and the hot cross buns. Now, if you want to go further on the hot cross buns and Easter, you will find that it's clearly mentioned in Jeremiah chapter 7 from about verse 16. And that is also one section of the text from Yahweh where he says to Jeremiah, don't pray to me for these people, I will not hear their prayers. Don't ask me to look after them. I have rejected them totally. And it is there in that particular verses you will see that they were worshipping Tammuz. Tammuz is the same as Jesus today. They were worshipping the Queen of Heavens and they were making hot cross buns. It'll tell you they were making cakes to the Queen of Heaven.
Now that gives you a pretty good rundown on how to identify Gog and Magog in the last war. Remember, as you've looked through this particular report, Yahweh calls all of the evil men up to his war. Why? Just to destroy them, exactly the same as he did for the king of Egypt when he brought them out of Egypt. And you will see that it is Yahweh who's put it into the minds of the commanders, the army, the air force, the military, to come and wage war. And he makes sure that they come up to have this war with him. And that is how he will destroy all nations and destroy all of the military might of this earth. Now, now in closing, I would urge you to have a look at a couple of other reports that I've given to you. One is called Israel, if Israel is not Israel, who is? And the other report that will help you understand what's going on, Yahweh never commanded any blood sin sacrifice in the 40 years that he brought them out of Egypt, nor did he give any command to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob to kill the son, as with Abraham. You will read in the commentaries that uh, the uh, both the Christian and the Jewish commentaries will say that that was to test Abraham. No, it wasn't. You can quite easily understand that Yahweh knows the end from the beginning. He knows your heart, your mind, before you even think. He didn't have to test Abraham, but that is the... That is the uh, doctrine that's come through the Jews and come through the Christians. So there was no command for any blood sin sacrifice whatsoever. And I gave you a report on that. I will urge you to get that report on YouTube. Have a look and you will see the lies and the false doctrine and the falsehood that have come through for the last 2,000 years from evil people and I just wish you Yahweh's blessings Yahweh's blessings on you and your family that you will come to the knowledge of understanding his truth and he makes a promise if you call on him by his name Yahweh he will hear and he will answer your prayers and all you've got to remember to do is keep the old ten commandments not hard to do Now to finish up this report, I'll leave uh, three different charts up on the screen for you to read, which will give you more understanding and more reference to the subject matter in this report. And in particular, when you see the green chart come up, which is showing you how Yahweh has rejected totally any of the so-called first Israel people, it explains to you that Israel, and here it is on your screen, Israel is the name, it is owned by, it is, it was designed by Yahweh God. It was given to Jacob, and it was given to Jacob because he had overcome sin. Now, if you relate that to today, if a football promoter of a football club found that his team was into drugs and booze and disrespecting the club's rules and laws, he will then throw the lot out and appoint another group of people. But the these people that he would appoint would keep the same name. And that is exactly what Yahweh is doing now. On your screen, you've got about blood sin sacrifice and all of the prophets that have given you clear words, divine words from the Creator God that Yahweh God never ever commanded for blood sin sacrifice. And all through this report, this is not my personal opinion. It is not my conclusion. I am giving you the answers to the questions direct from Yahweh's words. There's a couple of things that come to my mind. 
I had already published this report, but I pulled it back to add this little message to you because there's information that is vitally important for you to understand. First of all, understand this. Spare a thought for all of the millions of Jews that were killed. They were taken into captivity 721 BC. That's the end of Israel. And then the rest of them were taken into captivity by Babylon in 586 BC. That's definitely the end. And if you've read my previous reports and you've got your head into the old book and you've read it yourself, you will now know that Yahweh had warned them and warned them and warned them and warned them and allowed them to be taken captive by enemies after one after another. Why? Because they would not give up their idol worship. And that was proven to you in Exodus, um, Ezekiel chapter 20, I think verse 8. Now, understand how it all started there. They had 400 years in Egypt, which was steeped in blood, sin, sacrifice. 400 years of idol worship in Egypt. When they were brought out, don't forget, they brought their idols with them. And the, 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 the sun worship system that they were used to doing, that is blood sacrifice, you would have learned by now with the chart that I've, I've given to you. Yahweh doesn't tell lies. So who put all of the reports and the stories of blood sacrifice into the Torah? That's the first five books of the Old Testament. You don't have to be real smart to work that out. Now, those people, they didn't have a book to follow like you do today. You couldn't go down to the local bookshop and buy a Bible. And the only information they had that they were tutored with, that they were taught with, was from their elders and the high priests. And that, of course, you now realise was false, was fake. And they had the 400 years to kick them off on that. It didn't change because by, by 721 in the 8th century BC, Yahweh had had enough and allowed them to be taken captive by the Assyrian nation and then allowed them to be taken captive by the Babylonian nation. Now, if you wind the clock a little bit further forward to the Sanhedrin, we're talking 200 BC to 200 AD, the Sanhedrin, were the Jews that were the leaders of the people at that time. Now, I'm going to put up a little bit of the script out of the web and Wikipedia. You'll get a lot more if you want to Google it. As I'm talking to you now, I'm going to put up some of the details of what happened to them at the Sanhedrin. They were not loyal to Yahweh. They were part of the same Jews that came out of Babylon that were already steeped in apostasy, already steeped in the wrong teaching. As Yahweh said, don't, don't pray to me for these people. I have rejected them and I want nothing to do with them. They're the words from Yahweh to the Jeremiah and to Isaiah and to Ezekiel, the prophets. So you've got to understand that today, since then, the Jews are still following, upholding to the oral law, the Talmud, Mishnah and Gomorrah, that they came out of Babylon for, which was an abomination to Yahweh. They're still following it today. And you would have now, by, by now, realised that they are under a curse by Yahweh to be annihilated to be annihilated because of their wickedness and to be annihilated because they would not take any correction. Now, I want to just say this about taking any correction. Our country is only a couple of hundred years old. We haven't had 400 years of idol worship, or have we? You will see a report that I gave to you how the 
pagan religions have taken over all of our religion today. Now this is very hard for you to grasp and it's very hard to, to uh, understand. I know myself when I just first of all started to accept the words of Yahweh, the Creator God, from the old book, I noticed there was a lot of fake inserts in there, but all I wanted to do was to know the truth from Yahweh. And if that's all you want to know is, that is, you've got to hit, get your head into the book and read it. And you too will find out the truth of what Yahweh plans to do as much as what he did do to try and correct the people. Today, you have uh, the Christian religion and the Judaism religion. Both of these religions are steeped in lies, false doctrine, as you've now realized. And in particular, you've got the Christian religion that relies on the doctrine that they've been taught for a couple of hundred years of the blood sin sacrifice of Christ on the cross to, to forgive their sins for redemption. I've already shown you the only God that can forgive sins is Yahweh. I've already shown you that Yahweh, by his own words, said he never commanded any blood sin sacrifice. So it's going to be just as hard for you to give up what you've been taught by dad, by granddad, by great granddad, and all the way back for, two, for the last couple of hundred years of Christianity which is the added words in the New Testament. A law that Yahweh said, don't add to my words. Now, how can you come to grips with just this message and just Yahweh's words when you just can't swallow that for 200 years the people have been following a pagan worship system? Oh, with a new name, Jesus, and with Mary, the Immaculate Conception, and so on. It is a false religion. Now, one thing worries me is if it was too difficult for Israel to give up their idol worship, it's also going to be the same for you today, to give up the idol worship of Jesus, because that just won't go down well with you that you've and your granddad and your great-granddad and all the way back have been following a worship system which is not only corrupt, it is a throwover from the pagan religions. I'll put up the text, as I said, of giving you an understanding of the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin gave the world what you've now got with the Jews, and that's the oral law and the Talmud. Those head rabbis out of the Sanhedrin were taken out, executed. You will see that. And there's some more information that I'm going to put up for you to show you that there was a sect of Jews that rejected the Talmud, rejected the oral law, and they were called Karaites. And it is the Karaites that were not annihilated throughout the last 3,000 years, as the other Jews have been. And it's the Kurates that the German warfare let alone. Russia left them alone and they were ingratiated into the forces as an elite fighting force as far back as the 13th century. And those Kurate Jews are still walking this earth today. What they believe or what they do, I don't know. But I know they were not under the curse to be annihilated as all of the other Jews were under the curse to be annihilated. I asked you in this report, Google pogroms. And when you read what they have had happen to them, you will not be able to read the report without shedding a tear. And the most unfortunate thing is, all of the people that uphold to that oral law, the Talmud, the Mishnah, the Gemara, they are still under the curse to be annihilated right through to the end of days. Now, if you held to the false doctrines of the New Testament, there's no way in the wide world you'll understand this war that I've shown you, Gog and Magog, because you believe that the good Christian people are up in heaven, or you're 
Christian people are going to wait for Jesus to come in the clouds and be taken up there to be with them in heaven. That's not what Yahweh says and that's not what the old book says. No wonder the people have not been able to understand the Gog and the Magog war because it tells you quite clearly that Yahweh is redeemed. The ones that he is going to save that are faithful, they're not hypocrites, they're not criminals, they're faithful people and those ones that he's going to... I'll say that again. The chosen people, the redeemed people, as you've read in this report and in the book itself, they're kept, they're held on this world under the protection of Yahweh, the created God. They're not in some hairy fairy heaven. They're not going to be raptured up. They're not going to be waiting for a son God, son of God to take them home. As a matter of fact, I was talking to a friend the other day. I said, show me in the Ten Commandments when Yahweh says in the Ten Commandments, you will have no other God before me. Where is there a verse that says, but in a couple of thousand years' time, I'm going to send my son? It's not there. And when you rely on another deity for forgiveness of sins and redemption, you're relying on another God. And Yahweh made it quite clear, which you've read in my reports, from his words, no other God, nobody else, no deity can forgive sins but Yahweh the Creator God. Now, I hope this at least motivates you to have a look at the report, get your head in the book. I've given you, as I've been speaking to you, I've given you details out of the web about what happened to the Jews when they came back out of Babylon. They still thought that they were his people, but they weren't. They still thought that they were going to be protected, but they weren't, as you saw in the text that I've given to you on this report. Oh, dear, oh, dear, may Yahweh bless you and give you his words. If you want to understand the words from the Creator God, the creator of all life, just go by his words and his words alone to the prophets. He doesn't tell lies. And you've got to realize, why did he tell four other prophets that he made no such commandment for a blood sin sacrifice? He doesn't tell lies. And when you look at what is in the first five books of the Bible and you know where they came from, you've now got an idea of how many fake inserts were put there to lead the people of this world for hundreds of years into a false doctrine. No matter what, no matter what church you belong to or what religion, it has led the people into darkness for hundreds of years. Now I'm putting this uh, chart up for you on Daniel 2, Daniel 7 and Daniel 8 again so that you don't have to go back into my previous report. Please make a note to yourself and look at items 5 and 6 of chapter 2 because that is where Yahweh, the Creator God, brings in that new Israel and it's represented by the mountain that fills up the whole earth. That's his religion. Daniel 7, look at items 4, 5, and 6. All of the governments are being recorded into corporations. That's happened right in front of you. And Daniel 8, look at items 4, 5, and 6 again. Because, again, it shows you that all governments by the United Nations have been converted into corporations. They are no longer a constitutional government for the people and by the people. Now it's easy for you to understand how the New World Order, the United Nations, NATO, the IMF, the ruling oligarchy that's ruling all of the countries of the world, they will eventually come in and take over all of the countries and they'll just throw out like a board of directors of that one and put in their own. They're going through the, the fatical elections that it's a constitutionally elected government, but when the members of parliament are, are in there, 
they got to do is they're told like a director of a company. Okay, to finish up our report, if you want to know who is the new Israel group at the end of days and where are they and what are they doing, I'll give you this as a final chart and there is a lot of text there and I'll guarantee to you, no, I'm sorry, I won't guarantee to you, Yahweh is guaranteeing to you who they are, where they are, and what are they doing. Yahweh said, I made the heavens and the animals on the face of the earth and my great strength and with my outstretched hand, and I gave it to whomever was fitting in my eyes. And whoever is fitting in his eyes, he is choosing again. I put the Yahweh is choosing a new group of people who are worthy in his eyes. And you've got all the text there to look at that. And it tells you again, my people will live in peaceful domains and in secure dwellings at the end of days. You want to know where they are, what they are and who they are? Read the text and Yahweh God will tell you.